Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Stephen Salmon, just like the fish, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. Yeah, you had, to, okay, I have something awesome. You have it not sponsored by, but you had some very personal, exciting news you shared with us just a moment ago. Oh, yeah. You need to share it with everyone else. Uh, I got certified dive master, so I finished that, and I'm a paddy professional now, so I can teach you how to dive. That's Although cool. you kind of know how to dive. You, I kind of know how to dive. You've dove before. I'm like the, the guppy, and you're like the... Well, you're not, but you'd be lower because you can go deeper. What goes lower than a guppy? I don't know how it works, but yeah, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Got that done, passed all the tests, and uh, it was exciting. What was the best part? What was the most fun part of that training and certification stuff? Uh, probably just being able to work with students and um, being able to teach other people how to dive. I mean, that's really cool. Have you found sunken treasure? Uh, treasure. No, but I am taking a trip to a lake specifically to find stuff that people lose on docks. See, there you go. That's yep. perfect. It's going to be paying for itself anytime. Uh, I saw a guy, he, uh, he posted a video. He found four Rolexes, a couple of diamond rings, some GoPros, um, some phones, and a couple other things just by to about 20 minutes of free diving Ooh. off a dock on a lake. Where do you find four Rolexes at? I don't know, but I was like... <laughs> I can stay down way longer than him. He just has a snorkel. So <laughs> imagine what I can find. Yeah, yeah. You, you can find whole Rolls Royce down there. Yeah, maybe. probably. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So what else we got going on? Uh, today's episode is not sponsored by, as always, Cheese It. Got one for you. Thank you. And one for me. Original, 100% real cheese, and they're delicious. This is 100% real cheese. Yeah, I have a whole box in my office, and it's like my guilty pleasure now. When I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh, I'm really hungry. I'm like, oh. I got the Costco pack of Cheez-Its right <laughs> over here. I'm just going to eat those. I'm sure it was for a snack for some event at some point. Yeah. And they just made their way in there, and I've been enjoying them ever since. That's good. So thank you, Cheez-It. I have something awesome you need to check out. Okay. Now, you're familiar with remote control cars. Yes. Remote control. We've showed, we featured a drone, actually, on our show before. But I want to show you something that's different from both of those. This is a remote-controlled helicopter. And it does what you would imagine, except not how you would imagine it. And this okay. is... Of all the famous uh, RC helicopter pilots you know, you're obviously thinking of, that's right, Bert Kramer. Okay. And so Bert, a uh, world famous RC helicopter pilot, yeah. has a video that posted in 2011. Now, it doesn't have a billion views or anything, but it is impressive and deserves those. So, <laughs> come on, right? What? <laughs> doesn't even look real, it looks fake. Is that a, it's on a string. No, what? It's, he's seriously just piloting that as a. He's got a crowd. No. He's got like a. He's got a groupie. Dude, this is Bert Camer, Camerer, Camerer. He's mowing the grass. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's he's gonna, cool. He's gonna carve his initials. That is really cool. Whoa. <laughs> it's like those. Uh, this is what the flight shows are gonna be now. <laughs> not, not, not pilots flying planes, it's just people flying these drones in these crazy ways. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. now that you're wow. a dive master, maybe you should set your heights uh, a little higher for something else. Mm, I'll keep going under the water. Okay. All right. Anyways. That is cool, though. Yeah. That was really cool. So today we're talking about preaching to kids. Uh, something a lot we of usually us talk about get that. to do. Yeah. Something a lot of us get to do every single week. Mm -hmm. Some of us not so often. Mm -hmm. Some of us are going off of curriculum. Some are writing our own stuff. Um, but we want to talk about just some big ideas about preaching to kids and where to start. Yeah. So I'm just curious, Stephen, when you preach every week, do you use a, a pre-prepared text? Are you writing your own? And, and how do you get going? Yeah, it totally depends. Um, we've, got, we've got a couple things that we, we use. We're writing a, um, a plan this year, almost like an 18-year plan. So where they come in at birth all the way up to 18 years old, we know what they're going to be learning the entire year and have cool. that all mapped out. But um, we, uh, I mean, we'll write it sometimes, and other times we find something, we go, wow, that's really good. Why reinvent the wheel? But let's just make sure that we focus it for our students, not just, like, recite whatever's on the paper, right? You know, you just do what someone else has written. Right. It doesn't, it, and that never goes well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So make it your own, and, and where do you start in that process? 
Uh, we always start way before the series has started. So we have to first go, what do we want this series to be about? What are we going to be teaching on? What is it going to be about? What do we want them to learn? And what is going to be best for our kids? That is like the biggest thing. What is going to be best for our kids? And so we start there and then we go, okay, this is our idea. What stories from the Bible fit into this? Okay. And then that's kind of our, where our whole thing starts. And then we start adding in all the elements and yeah. that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So topically is your general approach? Yeah, yeah, and you, you, something we never do is just go into a Sunday or a Saturday or a weekend and just go, you know what, uh, whatever comes to mind today, I'm going to teach on. It might be different each gathering or <laughs> service or whatever. Right. You know, we always go in with a plan and it's it's laid out. All the volunteers have it, and then we execute that plan. So, how how far out in advance do you plan? I mean, you talked about an eight, eighteen year plan. I don't assume you email that out. No, but if two a, decades in advance. No, 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 but. What's nice is on the 18-year plan is if we, when we finish that, we're going to have a really solid foundation for going forward because they're going to be learning different stuff. And we can see and go, hey, instead of the children's department, maybe the youth department going and both teaching on, I don't know, David and Goliath. You, they're in fifth grade, then they go to sixth grade, and they hear the same stories. We can like focus that and go... No, we want to teach them this, and then that builds on what they're going to learn the next year. And so by doing that, we can have it once we, it's a big, it's a lot of work on the front end, but once it's done, we can just kind of tweak it and make it work going forward. That's cool. So you're coordinating with your youth department yes. to get that scope yeah, 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 put yeah. together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's All cool. the way through, yep. Now, what about you? You have some experience. Yeah, I've preached a few times to kids. Yeah. I, you know, I think the main thing for me that's really stuck um, and I really see this, like speaking at camps, when you have longer times with the kids. Because mm -hmm. on Sunday, you get to speak, what, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe. I mean, that would be a long 15 minutes is, sermon. oh, that is a lot of time. That's so, like primo. Yeah. So I've been to camps where you have like a big chunk of time. They really want you to use it well. Um, and so something I started doing at camp, but I realized is really effective, even if you just have a seven minute window, mm -hmm. is um, not just preaching at once, your big idea, whatever it is, it's preaching it at least three, four, five times, the same idea. Okay. And, um, and you, we all know kids have different learning styles, kids developmentally are at a different place, and we're usually speaking to a group with a wide range of ages, some would, of us first to sixth grade even in a room. Would this be like, you do an object lesson, an illustration, and something else? Or? Yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. So tell the Bible story, tell a personal story, um, do some sort of object lesson, cool. maybe even have a video, do like a drama, have another prop, have like a comedic thing. That's good, that's And just good. over and over and over again, you're just proving, you're just kind of proving that big idea again and again. Yeah. And as an adult, it seems like a little bit repetitive and exhaustive. Sure. But for kids, as long as you're having fun every time, they're totally into it. Yeah. And you don't have to even worry about yeah. them getting bored. And yeah. even the adults where you think like, okay, like the adults are gonna be sick of hearing this. It's that age old thing. By the time you're finally sick of saying it, people are finally picking it up yeah, for the first yeah, yeah. time. I think you said something really good there too, is having fun with the kids too. Like yes. that's a huge, that's a huge part. If you're having fun, they're gonna have fun and they're gonna be into it. And so that's, I, I've always seen that as like, hey, if nothing else, have a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a lot you could, um, you could go as far as preaching to kids goes and just any, I don't know, do you have any good resources or books that you've read to kind of, um, Oh man, uh, I think the best resources that I've seen is just watching what other people do at these camps and yeah. different stuff, is making sure you get out there and and are watching. Don't get so insulated and bubbled in what you're doing that you don't expand and look at what other people are doing because there's some really good stuff out there and it might spark something yeah. and you can go, whoa, okay, great. Yeah, I can, I can totally do that. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right, Steven, I have a, a bit of a challenge for you. We're going to play a guess the word game. Now, right. I'm going to be giving you clues, and you need to guess them. Oh um, our wonderful assistant, Ashley, thank you, Ashley, wrote down the words on this piece of paper. I've not seen them yet, okay. but I need to get, I need to see how many I can get you to guess um, in, uh, how much time should we get? 30 seconds or less? Sure. Yep. All right, 30 seconds or less. Okay. I'm seeing how many of these I can get you to say. Now, I can do anything except act it out. The catch is I will have this in my mouth here. Have you seen this game what? with this little thing? No. So you're gonna love this, uh, slash be traumatized by this. Okay. So you're gonna have trouble sleeping tonight, but I'm gonna put this in my mouth. Okay. And with this in my mouth, I'm gonna try to get you to guess 
the words on this Without paper. Without saying, you can't say the words. I can say the words. Oh, okay. You may not be able to understand the oh, words, okay. and I will probably spit on you. So, oh, oh, uh, 30 gross. seconds. I can see the timer on your thing, so okay. I'll get this in position here. All right. Okay, this is good. All right, Steven. Yeah. Look at me. Look in the eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay, are you ready? It's uh, like a dentist's office. Uh, it is like a dentist. Ready? Set. Go. Okay, number one. Security check-in experience. Se security. Uh huh. Check-in. Checking. Check-in. Check. Check-in. In. Check. Check-in. Experience. Ex. Ex. Experience. There's so much spit on security your tongue right now. Experience. Okay. Experience. Good. Good. Okay. Number two. Okay. Hot show. Puppet show. Yeah. Hot show. Number two. Number three. Honey Earl Giving. No. Honey yeah, <laughs> Earl Giving. Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, that's it. Oh. I think that time. Uh, okay. Buddy Barrel Giving. Buddy Barrel one. Giving. Oh. You should have known it. <laughs> Holy Spirit, that's like, it's in there. <laughs> it's so in at there. At least it's the same realm. Oh, oh so. man. That was good. That thing is gross. Yeah, you can borrow this later if you want. I'll, no. I'll give it to you. I don't want it. All right. Well, that is our, uh, our podcast for today. This is Stephen Salmon. Brent Colby. See you next time.